So here's the problem to work through. We have two data series for 10 petrol station, a sample of 10 petrol station, prices at which they sell petrol and their market share. The first question here asks us to calculate the uh, um, weighted average price. Okay, so the average price but weighted by market share. So when we calculate unweighted averages, uh, let's do that here, A, and we calculate unweighted averages, the P bar, we would have just calculated 1 over 10 because we have 10 prices uh, and then times the individual, times the sum of the individual prices. So we summed all of them up and divided by 10. When we calculate a weighted average, so let's call that P bar W, or weighted, the formula is the sum of pi times wi. So we just sum up pi times a weight. So that's going to be in this column here. Now these weights, they have to sum up to 1. Okay, we just have to see how much proportion does everyone get. For the unweighted average, everyone gets 10% because we're having 10 petrol station. But now it's different. We want to use the market share as a weight. So what you would normally do is, in a weighted average, you would take your variable according to which you want to weight, sum all of them up, you get 1 in this case, and then calculate to get this weight, you would calculate 0.17 divided by 1. But since they're already all sum up to 1, this is just the same, we just get the same value. But you can use other weighting schemes where the sum of this variable will not be equal to 1, and then you do exactly that. Okay, You calculate that value of 0.17 divided by the sum, 1.0. But since the sum is already 1, we just replicate all these values here again. Okay, but the, the scheme is more widely applicable. Your weighting variable may not sum to 1. So here are your weights, 0 0.23, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. So then you calculate a new column here, which is Wi times Pi, exactly what we need here, Wi times Pi. So um, Let's see, you can get your calculator out. We'll do that for a couple of columns where it's very easy. So for instance, 0 0.1 times 1.07 here is going to be 10.7. And here we have 108.5 times 0 0.001. That is going to be 1.085. And so forth. You can do that with, uh, with all these uh, values. Okay, you need the calculator. I'm not going to do this here. I'll leave that for you. I just give you the final result of the sum. Okay, what's the sum of that column then? Well, the sum of that column uh, is going to be 106.36. 106 Let me just check that. Yeah, and that means that is Oh, sorry, that was the, uh, the wrong line. Okay, so that's going to be this, 106.364. Now, the actual average, the unweighted average was 107, 107 pence. Okay, and the weighted average, weighted by market share, is 106.364. So why is that different? Well, the, the petrol stations with the larger market share seem to have perhaps on average lower prices. So let's find the uh, largest petrol stations. That would be 8, 23% and 1, 17%. And you can see both of these have prices which are below the unweighted average. The unweighted average was 107. These prices are 106 and 106. So these weigh more 
in the weighted average calculation and since we have lower values here than the average our weighted average will come in lower and vice versa we could check um, a few of the um, lower market share ones here we have a low market share and here the price is 108 it's higher okay here as well two percent market share 108 okay so yeah okay that's all there is to the calculation of the uh, weighted of the weighted average part b of the question so I'll do the answers here let's do that here part no we'll do that here part b given that one gallon equals 4.546 liters find the sample mean and standard deviation of the prices per gallon now these prices here are prices per liter liter okay like this so if we want price per gallon and now we know that one gallon is equal to 4.546 liters so if we now want the price per liter well uh, per gallon well what we need to take is for instance for petrol station one we take that price and multiply by 4.546 okay so you could imagine doing this for for each petrol station okay so uh the price per gallon let's call that pg would be 106 times 4.546 for the second station it would be 106.7 times 4.546 and so forth and you could calculate all of these 10 values and then calculate the average of this there's an easier way to do that okay p gallon p bar per gallon is equal to 1 over 10 times the sum of pi but the price per gallon now what is pi that is just the same as pi per liter so without extra l it's per liter times 4.546 so now we have a sum here with something which changes that value changes for the 10 petrol station but that value does not change so we can bring that out side of the sum so we have 1 over 10 times do it like this 1 over 10 times the sum of the pi and then that factor 4.546 now of course what we have here is that this bit here is of course just p bar the price the average price and we have that 4.546 so to calculate the average price per gallon we can take our average price 4.546 which we know to be 107 times 107 and that will give us the price the average price per gallon which then is 486.42 so we don't need to do this calculation this like recreate the spreadsheet in prices per gallon you could do that and you could try it and then you can calculate the average of that column and you will get exactly the same so it's easier if you know that we are just changing the prices by a fixed factor we can bring that fixed factor outside of the average calculation so because that spreadsheet isn't needed let me just wipe that away and create some space i want here to calculate the standard deviation calculation now i just tell you for this question you could again of course once you created that table you can then calculate the standard deviation however it turns out that to calculate the standard deviation of the price per gallon so let's call that g again is done calculated in exactly the same way 
4.546 times the standard deviation we calculated just for these prices. Now, the standard deviation for these prices was, that was in a previous question, was all point, let me just check that, 9.5 pence. Okay, and then we have this factor here, 546 times 0 0.95 pence, and the result here is 4.33 pence. So the standard deviation for the prices measured, uh, the prices per gallon is 4.33 pence. So again, all we needed is our standard deviation for the prices in liters. S, and that was 0.95p, we calculated that previously, and we had to multiply this with um, that factor 4.546, which translates uh, liters into gallon. So part C now asks you to demonstrate algebraically why the calculation in the previous part was so straightforward. For the sample mean, we've already done that. Okay, and let me just sort of go back to this calculation and replace that 4.546 wherever it appears just with a factor let's call that little g okay so it was here and here so you can see the generality of this result so let me uh, draw that in with uh, a green column okay so we had times g we brought that out okay so if pig is a fixed is a result of calculating pi times a fixed factor then we can bring that factor out which results in us merely having to calculate oh there's one more factor here in us merely to have to we take p bar so the original average and we multiply that with g. So why does that work for the standard deviation? Now this is this is going to be a little bit more algebra and there's a tip it's usually easier we know that standard deviation is related to the variance. Okay? So the variance is s squared measured in gallon and if you take the square root of that you get the standard deviation. So this is now a tip, okay? Most of these calculations work easier in the variance form, and then at the end, we can take a square root. So let's think about what is the variance of the price in gallons, okay? So let's call that PG, for the price in gallons. P is price in liters. So we know from variance calculations okay that we if we are taking a sample variance it's not one over n but one over n minus one okay so in our case that's nine so that is n minus one then the sum of we need our price in g for petrol station i minus the average in g and that's squared so minus so we take the sum of the squared deviations of our price from the average so we know of course let's do one over nine here the sum we know that pig is the same as pi times that factor g and the average price as we've established here is also just g times the average price in liters so perhaps you can see from here we can slightly oh uh, i forgot the squared here we can factor out that g inside here so we're still working inside these parentheses but here we have g and then times pi minus p bar so now we're having g times pi p bar. Now that's the same as 1 over 9, or n minus 1, if you want to be more generic, 
times g squared times pi minus p bar squared okay because that squared here applies to that product all right now this term again you have to realize that this is just a constant g squared just is a constant so we are having a sum we're summing up something and that something is multiplied with a constant that means that we can bring this constant outside of the summation so let's do that g squared and then 1 over 9 okay so this is a g Perhaps i have to be clearer and differentiate my g's and my 9's they look quite similar huh? it's a g it's a g as well okay all the others are 9's times the sum of pi minus p bar squared now perhaps you will realize that this part here is nothing else but the sample variance for the prices measured in liters so what we get here is that is equal to a g squared times the sample variance for the prices measured in liters so that was the variance so the sample variance is s squared for the price in in gallons so that's what we calculated so let's put that here okay but now we want the standard deviation so we take the square root is the square root of g squared times s squared and that is nothing else but g times s and with that we have established that the formula which we used here is valid so in some sense i'm asking you here the questions in the wrong way around i'm asking you to apply that formula in part b before you really have seen it if you've done the work in part c but since this is an exercise this is totally fine okay i wanted to demonstrate first how easy it is and then do the algebra to demonstrate how um, um how it is done